All right, all right. Hello, people. How are you all doing today? Sorry for the late start on this. Uh, my name is Aaron Whalen, and welcome to the five stage hiring process. So this is my first ever Facebook Live, uh, hence the, the late start, a lot of options and a lot of things to choose from as I was starting up the stream. And I'm super excited to dive into this training today. Um, so let me get settled and bring up my slides and we'll get started. There we go. <laughs> All right, so today we are going to be covering the five stage hiring process. This is all about how to source hire and hire a player talent. So if you're a business owner, um, if you're looking to, to scale your business at all, you know that at some point or another, you're going to need to hire somebody. Um, whether that's an EA, somebody in marketing, somebody in operations, in order for you to leverage more of your time and to be working on the, the things that you do the best, you're going to need more people around you and you're going to need to build out that team. So hiring uh, is a pretty important skill set for any business owner to learn. So in this training today, we're going to cover three different things. Uh, number one is the three reasons for hiring. Why do we hire in the first place? What what triggers that need to hire somebody? Um, knowing the three key or the three main reasons for hiring is important because that'll uh, determine some things that happen in the hiring process. Next, we'll look at the basic hiring funnel. Um, there's a million different ways to build out a hiring funnel. I've seen crazy complicated ways, but we're going to keep it super simple today and have a couple key steps in the hiring funnel, talk you through that, talk you through what needs to be in each of those steps, and then you should be pretty set to go there. And then we'll dive deep into the five stages of hiring overall. So first thing that I want to say is that the key is proper preparation. The more time that you spend up front on this, the better it is going to be in the long run. Um, because preparation is performance. Hiring somebody is extremely important to a business and it takes a lot of time and resources. Um, you have to take the time to build the funnel. Uh, sourcing can take anywhere from two to four weeks depending on the role you're looking for and where you're posting. You're gonna have to do interviews. You're gonna have to look at a lot of applications, look at references. Like this, this is not a, a simple task. So by taking as much time or taking enough time up front to prepare properly, means you're going to get better results later on. It's just like anything you do in business. So within a process, you're starting over from square one each time you have to hire. Going by instinct alone leaves the door open for poor judgment and robs you of the ability to assess and vet potential hires and stop red flags. So if you're, if you're scrambling during the process and trying to figure out, okay, I, I think I have new applicants here, but I haven't been tracking them and I have some emails here, it's good, great to lay everything out beforehand because then you can focus on the applicants themselves. You're, you can spend more time with them versus having to split that time between interviews and between like building the funnel as you go, or as some people say, jumping off a cliff and, and building wings as you, as you fall down. So creating the hiring process in advance allows you to focus on the applicants themselves and not the hiring process. Overall, plan it up front, you should have a better end result uh, in the end. So kicking off three reasons for hiring. Why do we hire? What are the, 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 the three key reasons that anybody will hire? Number one, capacity limits. So if you're looking to hire, um, if somebody in your company is reaching their limits, then you're gonna have to hire another person for that exact same role. This is pretty great because it's not a complicated um, hire when you're hiring the same role as you have before. Um, perhaps you can improve upon the hiring system and then hire somebody even better. By and large, you should be able to take the same assets, um, repeat the process, and get the same result. And it's a great problem to have. If you have capacity limits, um, hopefully they're an efficient worker. That probably means that you're, you're growing as a business and that you need more hands on deck to help you um, get the job done. So always exciting to be able to bring on the same role twice. Um, a great example of this are going to be sales setters at capacity with leads. If they're getting just absolutely inundated with leads day in and day out and they can't get to everybody, then that's a great time to hire another setter. You're gonna double the capacity and then your marketing department has more room to grow as well as your sales department and then delivery on the back end. So capacity limits are the number, uh, the first reason. Next up, replacement. Um, replacement could be a good or a bad thing. Um, two replacement methods or two reasons somebody needs to be replaced. 
is if somebody's exiting the organization, this can sometimes be good if they've been around for a while and they're going to, you know, take a, a, the next step in their career and grow. Um, I don't mind seeing people leave if that's the case. I'm always trying to make people better. So not always a bad thing. And in this situation, you're going to have more warning up front if they leave, hopefully, fingers crossed. Number two under replacement is they were let go. Either um, they weren't performing well or they did something really bad and you had to fire them immediately. That's the situation I hope you guys don't run into. Um, so hopefully it's number one, you're just replacing some of that's left. You've had a, a lot of uh, heads up and you know that it's gonna be coming. So replacing is not, is like the, the last thing that we want to happen, but we know it's gonna happen. It's a very costly event within business. If you look online, you're gonna see quotes anywhere from 30 to 50% of that person's salary is what it costs you to replace them. So if somebody quits or if you have to let somebody go and let's say their salary is $50,000 a year, that's going to be anywhere between 15 and 25, if my math is right, $25,000 in time and money to replace them. Um, the hiring process is going to take a lot of time. It's going to take your time, potentially an assistance. Then you have onboarding time. Then you have efficiency loss because it's going to take them a lot of time to get up to speed and be as efficient as the old person. So it really adds up over time and it's stretched out over, it, it doesn't happen in a couple of days. It's not like you can just pay the check and move on. Uh, it's like a ripple effect over a couple of months. And then, as I mentioned, depending on the situation, um, if they're leaving your organization and you're on amicable terms, then that could be you know, a potentially good situation or at best a neutral. If they were let go, it can, it can be a very rushed and hectic process. Hopefully you're not gonna run into that. And then number three, uh, new roles. So if the, the, the company is growing and, or you need to delegate responsibilities, then you might have to create a new role. Perhaps you're owning a lot of uh, tasks in the marketing department and you need a copywriter or you need a marketing manager. Creating a new role is always a fun time in the organization. Overall in the hiring process, it's not gonna change a whole lot. Um, it's gonna be the same as another hire. What is gonna change with a new role is that there's gonna be a lot more time required in onboarding and building out that process for the role. You're gonna to have to take what's out of your head or whatever somebody has been holding on to that's gonna be delegated or you have to create new processes and KPIs and metrics around new responsibilities that you want in the company. Um, so this is always a fun time as well um, when you're growing your business and you wanna find new talent to bring in and new positions. Next up, the hiring funnel. So with the hiring funnel overall, again, we're gonna keep this super simple. I've seen five, six, seven, eight step hiring funnels You've probably heard or read articles before about Google's crazy hiring procedures. You don't need to do that. Let's keep it super duper simple and make this easy so that you can, again, focus on the applicants and not the process. So first thing in the hiring funnel is sourcing. Where are you gonna be looking for your applicants? You're gonna be posting jobs. It could be on social media. We're gonna dive into sourcing a bit on this training. So that's step number one. From there, once you're sourcing them, you're pushing them towards an application. You need to get some kind of information out of them, a resume, something so that you can qualify them for the next stage, which is your interview process. Interviews, if the applicant looks good, is like the next step to, to dive deeper into it to see if they're a cultural fit to get some face-to-face -face time or at least live, uh, live chatting time over the phone, if that's the case. And then last but not least, after you've had all of your interviews, you're gonna pitch the offer. Um, you'll look at the best candidate, you'll, you'll, you'll figure out who you want on your team, and then you'll make them an offer in the end to say, hey, I'd like you to join. So uh, if we've talked about the, the three reasons why you're going to hire so far, we're going to be talking, uh, we've talked about the, the funnel itself, and next up, we're going to look at the five stages of hiring overall. So this takes the reasons and the pipeline, and then we're going to walk you through from start to finish. First up, identify. From there, you're going to be doing the sourcing. From there, you're going to be looking at filtering. Uh, number four is going to be select. And then number five, you're giving them that offer. So stage one, identify. Why are you hiring in the first place? So we've already, we've already spoke about that. It's one of the three reasons. Knowing this is going to uh, give you a bit of insight in terms of where you need to spend the most time, if you're going to be copy and pasting what you already have uh, done before, or if it's a new role, it's going to help dictate how much time you should spend on this hiring. How soon do you need this hire is also an important question. Again, if somebody's exiting your organization, it may not be your choice as to how soon you need this hire. If you're given the heads up, maybe you have two weeks, uh, maybe they were nice and gave you four, or if it's in the new role case or looking to duplicate a role, 
then you can kind of set the times within reasons. We're gonna dive deeper into defining the role. And then last but not least, we're gonna uh, look at the, the various assets and pieces in building a hiring funnel. So defining the role under stage one, um, this is your job description, the roles and responsibilities. Before you look at, before you think about salaries or um, where you wanna be posting this or what your, your job post is gonna look like, you need to define the role first. If you don't do that, everything else that happens after could be misguided or not align with the role. And then you could end up hiring the wrong person or somebody with the wrong skill set. So spend a lot of time here, um, bounce it off your peers, bounce it off your team members, see if they think anything else needs to be included. Really vet this document. So when you're defining the role, what you want to figure out, first of all, is the description. What's the primary objective of the role in the company? How are they supporting uh, clients? How are they going to be supporting their team? This is like the executive summary of what they're going to be doing. Next up, you want to get a bit more micro and start listing out responsibilities. What do you expect them to do in the organization? What are you going to be delegating to them? What do you expect their output um, of their time and their efforts to be? List out um, as much as you can. You want to make an exhaustive list. Then go back through it a few times. There might be a few things you can simplify or group together, but lay out the full picture of what you're expecting from them. And then last but not least, KPIs. I absolutely love KPIs. Data is important in business and everybody within the business should have a metric that they're owning or several. Generally speaking, I try to keep it to three to five, depending on the position. Sometimes if it's a, a smaller position in the company, they might have one KPI, but anyone from like uh, middle to, to management and on up would have three to five KPIs. Again, this, this kind of pairs with the responsibility. If the responsibilities are the efforts or the inputs, the KPIs are the outputs. Are they, are they doing a good job at, uh, with the responsibilities and the KPIs will help show if that's a yes or a no. So again, spend the time to find the role, get super clear on who it is you want to hire. Next, you're gonna build the hiring funnel and get ready for the sourcing stage. So again, to recap, it's a hiring post. It's an application. I usually recommend Google Forms. Uh, it's canned response emails, just again, to make the, to make the process a lot quicker. So you're not working in it. And then we'll get a list of interview questions together. So you can, you're prepped and ready for all the interviews. Hiring post number one, couple things that you want to look at here. Uh, so on the right, you can see an example um, of one that we put together for coaching. I think it was two pages in total, page and a half. They don't have to be super long or super complicated. First thing you want to do similar to the job description that you wrote uh, previously is a role overview. It's an executive summary. It's going to get them pumped up and hyped for the role and kind of explain at a high level what it is that they do. List of items to qualify them. So if you look at the green check marks on the right hand side, those are qualification things. If you want, uh, this is an opportunity for you if you want this, 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 this. And then it's really, really important to um, list uh, dis disqualifying items. The reason I like to do this is not to be not to be negative in the post or try to get rid of people. It takes a lot of time to hire. And if you're having to do a lot of interviews or read about a lot of applications, depending on where you're posting, uh, every, every extra person that submits an application is gonna take more time. So just like you do in sales, try to disqualify as many of them as early as possible. And then next steps required of them. Um, so at the bottom of it, I always like to have an action. Uh, again, depending on where you're posting, it might not be super clear. Some, if you're on Facebook, some people might post in the comments. If you're on a job site, some people might submit through the job site. I usually say go fill out this application and then drop my Google form URL in that, uh, that hiring post. I might also say something again to disqualify. I will not accept any, um, any applications by emails or uh, through job site web pages or whatever and just posted the link and say, this is the only place that we will accept applications. Again, you're trying to make this as easy and as streamlined as possible. And if somebody can't follow instructions on a job post, then I you know, probably don't want to be working with them. Next up, the application itself. So here is where you're looking, uh, looking to vet the people, looking to find out more about them before you bring them to an interview. So the basic stuff that you want, name, location, uh, social media link, if it's applicable, just to see what their, uh, what their brand looks like, uh, email address. It could be something like working hours, depending on the job. So just some basic information up front. You're breaking the ice. You're getting them to start to, to fill in some of the basics. Then usually I go into work history. Um, are they currently employed is always a big question that I like to ask. Uh, some of the best in people, people that you'll find are people that are currently employed. 
people that are not currently employed um, either ran into a bad situation or weren't able to cut it. So some of the best people that you'll find uh, to hire are currently employed somewhere else. As bad as it is, poaching is one of the best things you can do and, and, and usually brings in some good talent. What was their last job is also important. Um, I like to find out, you know, the last couple of jobs, their work history, stuff like that. Very important to find out why did they leave? A lot of people don't ask that question and that's going to give you insight into uh, if it was, they left on amicable terms, if they got fired, if it was performance issues. And when I ask this, a lot of people hesitate because they've never, never heard it before, but it's something that I definitely want to know. What were the responsibilities of the previous positions? And I want to hear about the results. Um, it, it's okay to hear what you did, but asking why did they leave and what were the results that they produced in the last position are two very important questions. And it, it, it you know, I've heard a range of things. I've probably done 500 interviews in my career and I've heard everything with the results from, I made a big impact to very specific breakdowns of financial numbers and uh, ROI on certain marketing campaigns. It's, it's, a, it's a broad spectrum. Some people have it and some people don't. And then last but not least, qualifications. Um, this is like their skill sets determining how good of a fit they are for the job. So they might need to know certain pieces of tech. They might need to have certain uh, qualifications or certifications. You might want to know that, that they've been working for a certain amount of time. Um, results from the previous roles might reflect that. And then last but not least in qualifications, I like to ask for references. Um, if I'm asking for references in the application, I will let them know that I will verify with them before I reach out, but references are always super important to have. Um, I, I highly, highly, highly recommend you look at references. Next up, canned emails. So again, we want to be as prepared as possible and make this process seamless. I don't want to be, have to write out an email every time an application comes in. That just takes way too much time. Even copy and pasting it for a from a document is a few extra clicks. So generally what I want is to have canned email responses in my email platform. So I use Gmail. It's very easy to, to save a template and then pop it open when I need it. So three key emails that you want here. One, I let everybody know that I've received the application. If in the future you make a more advanced funnel, you can have automated emails. Um, if you're using Google form for your application, which I recommend, there will be a thank you page and you can customize that to say, thanks, we received your application, we'll reach out in 24 hours. Um, so sometimes I like to send an email as well, just to let them know. And then that way I'm gonna prevent them from sending me an email and asking where, where, the, where the process is. Hey, did you see it? Can you read it? Any of the other questions? Number two, um, invite them to an interview. So if the application looks good and you're ready to chat to them, a couple of clicks and you have a, an invite out to them. And then number three, it's sorry, not a fit. A lot of people will not respond to applicants that are not a fit for the role. And uh, it's, it's personal preference. I like to respond to everybody for a couple of reasons. One, just to close the loop. Um, I've been in the position uh, in high school looking for jobs uh, or even fresh at a university. And I remember the feeling of applying to a ton of different places and just hearing nothing back. Um, so that, that, that's not how I like to do it. I like to follow up with everybody, close the loop, whether they're a good fit or not. Um, the second thing is, again, just to prevent follow up in the future and having to answer more emails or just have your inbox being flooded with, um, with questions about it. So with these email, uh, canned responses, make sure the copy is general. Uh, don't make it super specific. I don't even have like roles that they applied for in there. I just say, you know, thank you for applying to blah, blah, blah. We'll get back to you in 24 to 48 hours. That way I can use these emails for every single job role that I hire for in the future. So again, keep it simple, make it as streamlined and as reusable as possible. Next up, uh, or last in the, the hiring funnel, I'm gonna be interview questions. So you can research a lot of this stuff online. There's a thousand different things that you could ask. In general, I'd say background questions. So again, I wanna go through their, their work history um, or, or background to see like where, how they got into the industry or what they're currently doing. Um, I wanna know about the, uh, what they know about my company and why they're interested. So I'll ask them a few questions specific about the company to see if they've done their research. I want to say like, why, are you, why, why do you want to join us? Um, how do you think you can help us? You're going to recap their work history. Again, this is going to, I'm going to be looking at their application and see if they're, if it's matching up across the board. Um, results from the past position. What are their short and long-term goals? I want to see if they're going to, if I'm going to hire this person, I want them here for at least a year. Uh, if not, you know, two, three or four years. So I want to know 
what they're thinking about short term and then long term goals and see if that's a fit with the company. I ask what their top three skill sets are, what their biggest weakness is, and then I usually throw in an open ended question or a situational question. Um, open ended questions are one of my favorite. Um, uh, a question that I used to use a lot when I was hiring coaches or operational people is speak broadly to me what comes to your mind when you think of when you hear the words systems or processes. And again, just like the results question from before, it was a broad range of answers. Some people would give me the literal definition of it and that would be it. And it would just be silence afterwards. Other people would go on long philosophical tangents about <laughs> processes, systems, uh, their history, models they made of it. Uh, it's a really great question. And then situational question is another way to see how their mind works. Um, pitch a question, like if they're in a delivery or customer service department, talk about um, a rate customer, uh, somebody that's angry or wants a refund and how they'd handle the situation. Again, you're trying to see how their mind works. You're trying to see how they react to certain situations. So that was quite a bit. That is stage one. That is getting ready to hire people now that we have everything in place and we're ready to go. Next up, we're going to be doing sourcing. So where do you want to find your applicants? There's, again, a million different ways to find applicants. There's four that I would recommend in total in this order. Number one, hire internally. I love to hire people internally. Um, to promote them from one position to another is, is always exciting. They, it's a, a chance for them to grow within the company. It's a chance to reward their, their results, their good work, their loyalty to you. So I always like to hire internal first. Um, second to that, in terms of like a, a part B of hiring internal, I'd ask if anybody has any friends that they think would be friends or acquaintances that would be a good fit for the organization. Anybody that's on your team is going to know intimately your culture, what it's like to work at that place, and they would best know what it's like to work and who would be a potential fit versus when you start asking externally, people might think it's a good fit for somebody to go into your organization when it doesn't end up being that way. So whether it's hiring internally or asking them for references, that's where I always start inside the company. Next up is gonna be your community. Um, your community knows you very well, uh, just like the people within your, within your team, they're a degree removed from your team, but they're also a really great source to find new applicants from. They know uh, your culture, they probably know your mission, they know what your products are, they, they know you personally. So again, it's, it's a great fit for them to be able to find somebody with the skill sets uh, or the requirements or the interest in the position. The other great thing about this is that they can make that introduction and that's a transfer of trust. Hey, John, I think you should work at Tribe of Buyers. I'm a uh, client in their program and you know they do this, this, and this. I really like them. They have this role posted, blah, blah, blah. Next up, job boards. Uh, job boards can be good. They can, you can get a lot of applicants from job boards, but the quality starts to drop. So this list goes from very specific to broad, higher internal is gonna be small, your community is bigger, job boards is like outside of your world. And then the last thing that I'd recommend, um, and I wouldn't always recommend this, I've done this a handful of times out of hundreds of positions that I've hired, um, would be a recruiter. You can, depending on your, the resources that you have, if you have a lot of money and not a lot of time, this could be a good option. Um, they can find highly skilled people without you having to do much work. Obviously there would be some interview stuff there, but that's kind of the last place I go if my hands are tied. Stage three, filtering. So once your job post is out into the world, uh, hopefully applications are flooding into your inbox. This is where you're gonna start reviewing applications. If you set this up in a Google form, the Google form can export all the applications to a, a Google sheet, or you can look at them in PDFs. I prefer to look at them in the Google sheets and then I can do things like color code the, um, the, the different entries, red, yellow, green, green is uh, moving on to interview, yellow is like pending, I'll have a second look, red is an automatic no. So I'll be filtering the applicants um, each day and then I will send emails out maybe twice a day, maybe in the morning, I'll look at all the applications and for anybody that didn't make it, I'll send a not a fit email. For anybody that I wanna interview with, I'll send that email too. So reviewing applications, you're ranking them, you're sending out interview invitations, whether it's on phone, Zoom, in person. Um, you're gonna verify the information on the resume with what they say on the interview. And you're, you're digging deeper, you're trying to find more information. Yeah, they submitted a, re a resume and gave you some uh, basic information, but this is when you start to dig deeper. If they answer a question, 
you you just come back with another question and ask why or what was their 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 uh, train of thought during that time or what sparked that that activity or why did they go down this path? So you're always trying to ask more to, to find the information that's between the lines that they're not uh, openly going to admit or not willing to admit and just try to tease the information out. Um, a really great book that I read at least once a year, probably once a year is a book called Who, W-H-O. It's by Smart and Street. That's their last name. So if you look up H W-H-O, Smart and Street, I think it's like a hundred page book, but it's all about hiring processes. It's for large corporations, but they're what the, the way they talk about interviews in that book is really useful about digging deeper into it, asking more questions. They have example questions in there. So if you're looking for more information on that, that's something that I like to read often. Last but not least in the filter section, culture fit. You can't really grasp if, if a person's going to fit culturally from an application I find it's always better to do it on the uh, on a video chat, ideally in person. We're in weird times right now, so not always possible. Video chat would be uh, my second option, and then phone uh, last. From any one of those avenues, you can always get the idea of what kind of person they are and if they're going to be a culture fit for the company. So, once you've gone through all of those applications, you have everybody laid out on the board. You have everybody color coded and figuring out what um, who's your best applicants, who's your worst. What you're going to be doing is weighing, uh, taking your best applicants and then trying to figure out who your top one to potentially three are. Um, who's going to be the best culture fit for the company? Who's going to be, who do you think is going to stick around the longest? Who can help your company the most? It's, it's, it takes a lot to determine this. So take time doing this, read, you know, re-review the applications, reach out to their references, hop on a second interview if you want to, and ask them some more questions if you're still hesitant or if you have two people and you can't decide between them. But once you finally have that done, you're gonna make the offer. So a lot of people don't think about the offer stage. They think as soon as they see the applicant that they want, it's a done deal. That's not the case. <laughs> it's a, it's a two-way street to hire somebody. So you need to put out that offer letter. Um, what I like to do is, is phone them up and say, uh, it, it's a big time, it's an exciting time. You wanna celebrate it. I say, hey, so-and-so, I'm so happy. Hope you're having a great day. Hope I'm about to make a better, uh, we'd love to have you on the team. So just kind of break the ice, um, say that they made it, they passed qualifications. They don't always have to answer on the call. Um, hopefully they do, but you can say, you know, no pressure to answer now. We're gonna send you an email with all the details uh, as soon as they hop off the call and hope to chat to you soon. So hopefully again, they, they say it, but sometimes they might have multiple offers going. So you need to send more information and keep selling them on your company. So once I hop off the phone, I'll send a email with the summary and I'll probably include the contract as well, but the legal details, just in case they're, they're specific about that, it'll be their, their salary, um, there might be expected work hours, like whatever hasn't been spoken about or even the stuff that has, I like to summarize it all so that they can, that we're on the same page and they can make a, a clear and concise decision. And that's pretty much it. So to recap everything that we went over, we talked about the three reasons to hire today. Capacity is number one. If your team member's full, if you're full, if you do not have enough time to get everything done, you just duplicate a role. A new role is kind of similar to capacity. Um, if you want to delegate stuff or if you want new tasks to be happening within your organization, you're going to hire a new role. Or uh, <laughs> unfortunate or, uh, or not, uh, not fortunate, um, Unfortunately, fortunately, there could be an exit in your, in your uh, business. So somebody's leaving, you need to fill that gap. Next, we look at the hiring funnel. Keep it as simple as possible. Do as much prep ahead of time as you can. And what you're gonna do is uh, source them, uh, get them to go to an application, interview them, and then send them an offer. And then last but not least, we talked about the five stages of hiring. Number one, you wanna identify the role. Do this before you move to any other steps, please. Uh, if you don't do this, the results and, and every, all the effort that you put into the other four steps could be just a waste of time. Uh, next, you're gonna source them. You're gonna find out where these people are coming from. You're gonna filter the applicants. You're gonna select them. And then last but not least, send them the offer and try to close the deal. So that is it. I hope you guys got some great information out of this. Um, I am going to go find where there could potentially be questions or people posting stuff. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer it. Feel free to post them up. If not, I will wrap it up for the day and uh, 
hope you enjoyed it. So give me two seconds to find out where this might happen. Okay, I actually cannot see if there are any questions because the page is not loading for me. Please stand by if you are screaming at your screen and trying to ask me something. I do apologize. And Facebook is not working. So I don't know if anybody's listening to this. I cannot get to the questions. If you do have questions, I will be sure to reply back when my systems are working again. Uh, I'll do a quick Loom video or post up a text comment. Hope you all got something out of this today. Uh, this is quite enjoyable for me, my first stream. I'll be sure to be back with more topics, uh, potentially on data, maybe on some project management systems. If there is a future topic that you want me to chat about, feel free to post that up below as well. Um, I'll get some uh, and a, a list of ideas going and start working on my slide decks. Hope you all have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.